friends, welcome back to Image Graph here. I am Sudila. In our previous video, we did the introduction of Angular JS, and I told you that one of the most important feature that Angular JS has is that it follows MVC architecture. Well, in today's video, we will learn what MVC architecture is all about. Before going to MVC architecture in particular, let me first tell you what an architecture of an application means. It is nothing but a reusable solution to commonly occurring problems while the development of the application. When we develop an application, we might as well come across some problems that reoccur every day. Hence, we need not use the, we need not write the solution every day. We can use a reusable code to solve it. That is what an architecture does. Well, there are so many architecture that is available nowadays. We have event driven architectures, we have MVVM architectures, we have MVC architecture. So since AngularJS follows this, let's get started. As you can see, MVC architectures has three major components. The first being the model. Model is responsible for controlling the application data. It uh, modifies it, updates is according to the requirement. So all the application data is maintained by the model. The view. View is that part which is used to display the entire application data or a portion of it as and when required by the user. So all the displaying of the data goes on and is controlled by the view. The third and the most important factor here is the controller. Controller is nothing but the software code that is written to perform interactions between the model and the view. So let us go through this diagrammatically so that you guys get a clear picture of this MVC architecture. So as you can see, we have a view. So once the user come, we have a user here. Once the user interacts with the view, it puts some user inputs into the view. Okay, this user inputs is put via events. So every time a user interacts with the view, we get an event that is raised. Once the event is raised, the view sends the events to the controller. The controller is the place where we have all the logics that is written. And the view sends the user inputs or the event to the controller to which it is mapped into. For any view, we have to mention the controller to which it is mapped or the controller which is going to control all its data or the actions. So in, once the event is received by the controller, the controller having all the functions, all the codes, all the logics written here, receives the user inputs, validates the input according to our code that we have written and then performs the logic. Once the logic written here is performed, it sends the instructions, instructions to the model to do the necessary changes. The model receives the instruction, responds to it. Responds to it by adding data, modifying data, updating, whatever is required. So once the instruction is received and responded, we have the prepared data. Prepared data is the data that we receive after modification. So the prepared data is now with the controller. Once the controller has the prepared data, it sends it back to the place where the content needs to be displayed. So here we have the ready content that was required or asked for by the user. This is the entire flow how MVC works. We have a user, the user interacts with the view, sends it user inputs. The user inputs are again carried forward by the help of an event to the controller. The controller takes care of all the logic, all the updation, all the validation and then sends back the required instructions to the model. The model is where we have the application data. The application data is again modified, updated, done with the necessary changes as per the instructions sent by the controller. Once we have the prepared data with us, it is then sent back to the controller. The controller has the data that needs to be displayed or that is asked by the user. And then it sends it back to the view exactly where the displaying of the prepared data needs to happen. This is the entire cycle of MVC. So from here we can see the advantages of MVC. The first thing since MVC in architecture and architectures has to, is, has to its advantages the reusability, code reusability. Any function that is written inside the controller can be used again and again whenever necessary, wherever necessary. So the first important thing is code reusability. The second thing that you can figure out from MVC architecture is the modularization. 
We have a controller here with some specific task dedicated to perform set specific actions. We can have similar controllers with some dedicated actions. We are now modularizing the task. So whenever in the big applications, whenever we need to make a minor change, we need not alter the entire application, but go to the specific controller, hit the specific task, do the necessary changes without affecting the entire application. Hence, modularization uh, that FDC follows offers us with low interdependency. The codes are not dependent, juggled up, they are quite isolated and they perform their specific tasks. And you, and you should know that lower is the interdependency between the code or between the modules, higher is the performance of any application. So this is a big plus point of MVC architecture. The third thing that you might as well figure out from here is that a controller can be mapped to multiple views. Suppose we have a controller and we have the ready prepared state data. We can display the data in view 1, in view 1, in the form of a table. We can display the same data in the form of a form. We can display the same data as a textual format. So we can link the same controller to multiple views. So with the same functionalities, we can uh, display the prepared data as the user wants according to the user needs. So we have multiple uses of the same controller. So these are all the advantages and the flow of how the MVC architecture works. We will learn about more of the AngularJS directives in our upcoming videos. So stay tuned, keep learning.